this is Bill Childress, also known as Double O Dude, here on YouTube. I'm back to talk about Cubase um, LE, how to use it. Um, before we get into actually doing some recording, um, the first thing we're going to talk about is computers. Um, you don't have to have a supercomputer or some high-tech, you know, high-end laptop or anything to, to be able to record music at home. Um, I'm doing it right now with a computer that I built out of scrap parts um, that I had gotten from a friend of mine at work. Um, I'm sure each and every one of you knows somebody that's got an extra um, old computer that's laying around the house, out in the shop, or um, just in storage somewhere that they're not using. Um, the, the computers, um, when, you're, when you're recording, most important is going to be your processor speed and, um, and the RAM. Um, that's what I've ran into from my experiences. Um, I think that you're best off with uh, nothing probably older than like a Pentium 3. Um, on the minimum requirements on Cubase, um, they ask for a 500 megahertz um, processor. I like a, I like to use something with at least a gig processor in it. Um, those are computers that came out like in 1999, 2000. So, so they're out there. Um, they're usually free. Uh, you know, you just kind of got to pick and choose, see what you can get a hold of. Um, you may have to take two or three of them just to get the RAM out of all of them um, to be able to, to get enough. Um, the, the actual software um, requires a minimum of 256K of RAM, um, recommended um, 512K of RAM, and it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of RAM, um, which is your random access memory in your computer, um, to move um, audio around um, in the computer when you're doing editing and mixing or, or going, doing multiple tracks. Um, so you just want to be sure that you, you've got enough. Um, if you have any questions regarding requirements um, on, on Cubase LE, um, definitely um, refer to the manufacturer's website. They've got a pretty extensive manuals available. And if you're using Cubase LE, I definitely recommend that you go and um, download the PDF file and print it out. Um, seems a little bit handier to have it in a hard copy there in front of you while you're trying to trying to do your recording. But um, it's it's nothing. Um, you know, it's not like you're going to have to spend a, a bunch of money um, to, to get involved in doing home recording. Um, so you, you just need to kind of look around and be creative and you can come up with a pretty cool system. Uh, when I'm hooking up my equipment to my computer, I'm using a, um, a cord, some, you know, I got it at Walmart. Um, it, it, it's a quality cord, but it's, um, it's got a, uh, an eighth inch um, headphone jack on it, um, just like you'd use for, you know, like the jacks that are on, on your typical headphones that you use um, when you're listening to your, to your iPod or your MP3 player. Um, and on the opposite end of that cord, it has two RCA jacks. Um, I, I, and that's like the old style um, plugs that they used to plug your speakers into your stereo and stuff with. Um, I, use the, um, I usually plug the eighth inch jack into the uh, mic input on the, um, on the back of the computer on the sound card and then the RCA jacks I will plug into what I have is a Behringer uh, four channel mixer um, with phantom power where I can push a condenser mic with it. Um, it's, it's something that for me has worked out, it's been pretty easy but um, if, you, if you don't have that type of equipment or you're not using a condenser mic and just using like a, a standard um, Sure 57 mic or or you know even just a, a small um, a, just a small desktop mic you know something you get a radio shock or something just getting started um, you can you can plug right into your sound card and, and record with it. With the advantage of having a small mixing board, which they're not terribly expensive, um, the Behringer unit that I have was about 60 bucks, and I can plug in um, my mics, my guitar, uh, my keyboards, everything um, into one board. That way, I'm not continually plugging and unplugging things. It's a lot more convenient, and then also you have the ability to use an onboard EQ on it and if you are using a condenser mic um, it does have phantom power um, so that will push it. Another thing that's very important is the size of the hard drive. Um, it takes a lot of uh, memory to actually uh, to record on a CD quality um, when, when, you're, when you're getting ready to record yourself a demo or something. Um, you need to figure it's going to take about 10 megabytes per uh, minute per track. Um, so if you're looking at going eight tracks wide, you're looking at 80 megabytes, um, you know, per minute of, of, of recording on it. So you can pretty quickly um, eat up a hard drive. Now, when you're just setting up and, and starting out with a computer that you build up yourself, um, a lot of the older computers, a big hard drive was you know anywhere from, you know, um, oh, a gig, um, you know, to to two or three gigs. 
um, you know, nowadays the modern day um, hard drives, most of them are, you know, 300 or 400 gig. I really, uh, I've been using a, um, a computer right now that has um, one 10 gig hard drive in it and um, one that's like a 20 gig hard drive in it. And, and you, can, you can daisy chain your hard drives, so you don't necessarily have to run out and, and spend three or four hundred dollars for a, a large hard drive. You can use the ones that you've, you've got in the computers that you've scavenged together and daisy chain them and have the ability to, um, to save your songs and, and having a multiple projects on the, on the same computer. One thing that I didn't do that I definitely recommend that everyone does is that if you build a computer up to put together for recording, you definitely want to get something with CD burner in it. Um, I got mine all done, got my first project done, and then I couldn't get it out of the computer um, to put it over on my primary computer that I hooked to the internet uh, to upload it to uh, my MySpace page or even do anything as far as filming a, a video with it. Um, I ended up getting a card reader that was USB where that I could um, transfer the car, uh, song onto an SD card and then take it to my other computer. Now one thing too with your computer, once you um, get it all set up and you get the Cubase installed, pretty much you want to have your recording computer is only a computer for recording. Um, so you want to go ahead and trim the fat. You go through, um, remove all your web browsers, any add-ons on the computer other than what you absolutely need. You'll need your media player on it and your Cubase. Um, and that's just about it. You don't, you don't need much more than that. So you want to try to take as much out of the computer where that it frees up space and then also it doesn't use any of the, reforce, uh, the resources of the, um, of the computer um, when you're recording. Um, that includes doing things like disabling screen savers. Um, you don't necessarily need to get into you know, putting some elaborate um, background on your pages. All that stuff uses resources so you want to just totally streamline it where it runs as efficient as it can. It's also recommended um, that you defrag your hard drive um, at least once a week while you're doing recording since you're uh, recording a file, moving it around, deleting files and stuff so you can get a hard drive pretty fragmented pretty quickly and that slows down the, the speed that your computer will run. Another thing that I've found with, um, with recording on any computer um, is monitors are everything. Um, I, uh, I don't have any studio style monitors right now but I do have a quality um, set of headphones um, that I use while I'm recording um, and then I've got a, a, a decent set of uh, computer speakers um, with a subwoofer um, to go to for playback but one of the things that I've always noticed is that you never end up with um, your final product sounding exactly as they did through your monitors so I definitely recommend that anytime that you are getting ready to finish a project go ahead and burn yourself a copy um, you know to make an mp3 Take it out to um, a different stereo in your home. Um, some, you know, you may be your regular home stereo or your your stereo in your vehicle. Um, play it in there and verify that you're comfortable with the mix on it because that it will definitely sound different if you're mixing it down without studio monitors. But if there are people out there um, that you know know something that if I if I'm giving incorrect information, definitely um, um, put it down um, in the comments down there. Um, I always read the comments, and I'm also um, a learning musician. So uh, please, uh, you know, if, if you know something that, that I need to uh, convey to everybody that's watching this to learn, uh, please let me know. I know that everyone is excited to learn how to use their computer to record and how to utilize their Cubase software. And next time we'll be covering how to open a project and how to select your first track, do your audio adjustments, and we'll go ahead and do a little bit of recording. Until next time, I'm out of here. Peace.